We're gonna do a technical analysis of one of the best shot putters in the entire world, Peyton Otterdahl, and we're gonna start right now. All right, so we're analyzing 2021 Olympian Peyton Otterdahl, who just, now he's preparing for the World Championships, which is gonna be happening. He's gonna throw August 19th, which is next week. So this is, I believe, 2190. Let's watch this toss. To uh, Peyton Ottendorf, the US Championships uh, bronze medalist, the former footballer and wrestler. I didn't know he wrestled. The big thing is, what's he doing out of the back? Where's his right grounding? And then where, where is he at with his trunk when his left leg comes down? Teach the cameraman to keep the camera entirely on the circle, preferably viewed from this back angle. Second thing, as he opens, okay? He opens here, right? Pushes around that left side, right here. Now, I've mentioned one thing I don't necessarily like about Otterdahl is that he puts that left heel down early. And I think what ends up happening is he sort of falls in just a little bit with his left hip. And again, I'm saying this at the exact same moment, recognizing he's a top five, possibly top three shot putter in the world right now. I think he, if that opens up a little bit more, his hips come around a little bit more around his left, okay? And I really like his sweep leg there. I think his right leg right here might be like a hair long right there as it grounds, okay? But now one thing I will say, he's moving. That left leg's starting to move pretty quickly. However, I think if that left opened more, I think his left leg would actually be passing like more so right here instead of right here. Okay, so I think that that opening of his left foot would actually get it to be a little bit quicker. Now he's got a great torso position right here. Also a great outfit. I just realized different colored shorts there. And he even creates that little bit, you know, we've talked about the, the high point with the women's discus and with the men's discus, even to a point, he almost creates that with his elbows. So just see that that different camera angle sort of creates that. And notice here, some of you guys, Braden, we're talking about, I want to land a little bit more bunched up at the front. I think if you look at Krauser, Tunde, Joe, they're a little bit wider and that helps them be a little bit more comfortable and work the ground a little bit longer. Now, right here, I wanted to hold this because you, can, you can't see his left side. Okay, so right here is where you can sort of see he's holding that wrap position with his left arm, okay? Left leg's coming forward. His left leg comes forward right here, grounds. Everything's back over top of that right side. Nice, long position. And I will point out, if you look at that left toe, it's down. Look at his left arm, it's back right here, okay? He's catching that deep. This position with the left shoulder it's what Ryan does, Krauser. It's what Joe does as well when they're in really, really good form. So if that left leg is grounded, if you can catch that left arm back at, you know, at least like here, that's going to give you more tension to get into that really big finish. And then right here, you can see Peyton gets into right there, a flat left foot. One thing I have I've found interesting watching him throw I've always wondered if he's had like a, an ankle issue or if he has flat feet or an ankle, a previous ankle injury. Maybe, you know, they just talked about him playing football because he tends to shift and then that right foot will pick up a little early, but he shifts while into that flat left. Look at how long he's in that flat left. You know, we had some questions about the, the left arm here. Otterdahl gets pretty wide with that left arm, squares up that right hip and then everything really starts to rotate forward. Okay, so he comes forward. And you can see here like how long, like right here, how long he's still on that left. Shot's still in his hand. He's over top of that left big toe and he's still grounded right here. Okay, that's really, really good patience as he comes forward on that reverse. And I think that this is like, some of the big factors around his movement is that he's consistent with his technique now that he's not hurt right now. He's in, a, he's in good shape. He's in really, really good shape. He's competing better, catches this middle position. You can see that left arm there and that sweet tattoo. But you can see that left arm position that he holds in the middle. Okay, gets that nice wrap right there. And if you, if you watch that left arm, okay, watch what he's doing there. So somebody was talking about, do we flex or do we lengthen? I think you could do a little bit of both. You could, you could flex the pec, lengthen the lat. And that creates a co-contraction in that left shoulder, which will create a little bit more stability through that trunk. Okay, and then what ends up happening here, 
hold that position, hold that position, everything gets caught way back and then you just keep transferring forward. So I think the big things with, with Otterdahl is just that movement out of the back with that nice right leg, grounding early with that right leg in the middle, wrapping with the left, and then being patient through the finish. Does anybody have any questions about Otterdahl? Yeah, so the question was, when Peyton comes out of the back of the circle, he puts his heel down right here, and he sort of almost like falls in a hair, just a hair. And so is that okay? Is it not okay? I think it's okay for him, for sure. I think at your level, your guys' age, you can think about letting that open a little bit more, but at the same time, recognize that if you do have a tendency to drop it, it's gonna be okay. So make sure that you guys follow all these tips so that you can drop some bombs. Until next time, peace.